I am doing exactly what I want to do at this point. For a week, we had to carry around an egg and pretend like it was our baby. I have love for them, compassion. I beat her down, stomped her, punched her. She asked me if I would dance with her, and during the whole time, she was smiling, and so was I. My mother always told me that you can be anything that you want to be. Yeah. Skyline Community is about empowering, educating, and the health of minority youth and women. The way I see Lewis is like a father. He really is like a second father to me in the sense that I, you could say, grew up with him. He knows me for like four years now. And in the sense that every time I have a problem, I could go and speak to him about it. If I couldn't tell my mother about it, I could speak to him about it and he would guide me through and give me advice and what I could do. I got involved with Skyline Community in order to try something new. Um, I've, I've never done film production or really interacting with other youth as far as public health or social issues and I felt that this was a way to start. So I think that the positive message that Skyline projects is one that we all need, adults, young, the youth, males and females. I believe that Skyline community is a very positive influence to urban youth today because um, it not only uh, teaches them to, um, to work for the money, but it also teaches them about life and so in so many ways. I got involved with Skyline because I figured it was something good and positive, and I would be heard. Everyone who comes through our course, I don't expect to be a filmmaker tomorrow, but I expect every youth who comes through my course to be media literate, meaning to understand what's in the media, to be able to access it, and to respond to it, that you're not just a passive viewer. And the other thing is the guidance component, that we're not just doing videos that are classroom projects that are going to collect dust. These are videos that are going to go back into the community to empower our communities, but that also our youth who make these documentaries are going through an intensive process when they address these heavy-duty subjects that could be anything from teen dating abuse to teen suicide. In order to play with this record, you must tune your bass to us. Stabbed her with pens, pencils, a Rambo knife. Um, I beat her down, stomped her, punched her. You know what I'm saying? Dragged her by her head. You know, I flipped on her so many ways. A lot of people, when they hear the word abuse, they usually think it's something physical. Abuse can be verbal, abuse can be emotional, and I think that people don't really see them as real issues. I felt like I needed to be with someone. And that really was one of the main things that kept me in the relationship. And I also didn't really see it for what it was. I didn't think it was abuse. I just thought that's the way relationships are. At times I felt she wasn't being faithful and I had, you know, I had to put my hands on her so she could respect me. My father physically abused me, you know what I'm saying, when I did wrong and emotionally by my mom's. I always felt like something was lacking. Um, they provided for me, my parents, um, but for some reason it wasn't enough. And I feel that that was because of the way my father spoke to me. I didn't feel like I was important, like I meant anything, like I was smart. I didn't feel any of those things. So I tried to seek it elsewhere. My father used to tell my mother things like, 
you know, you're supposed to do this and don't you know that's your job and, you know, what kind of wife are you and I don't know why I got involved with you and you know we're only together because of them, the meaning the three kids. And he would just basically tell her that everything she was doing was wrong. So she was just, she really couldn't do anything. My mother didn't work, my mother didn't, my mother didn't have a higher education. So she was basically stuck and I think it's that reason and only that reason why she stood. When my family noticed me abusing her, you know what I'm saying, they, they like started like trying to, you know what I'm saying. I mean, they seen that I was doing it, so they like had something against me. They knew I was in the wrong, you know, and I got into problems with her father, you know what I'm saying, and her brothers. I did um, experience verbal abuse, emotional abuse from my father and from a boyfriend. I was with my boyfriend for about it was at least eight months before the verbal, emotional abuse started. She was my first, really first love, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, I loved in the manner that I would do anything for her. She told me when I first got with her that if I ever put my hands on her, she would leave me. But she figured that would be the first time, and I thought it would be the first and the last time. But it wasn't. I felt he loved me. I felt that he was giving me attention. Even though it was negative attention, I felt this he's paying attention to me, and you know, he doesn't like what I'm doing. That means he cares about me. She tried getting out of the relationship a couple of times, but I wouldn't allow her because of the jealousy. He would also embarrass me in front of my friends, you know, things like that. Say, I know you're not going to talk to any other guy because nobody else is going to look at you because I'm the only one who will give you time of day. I used to curse her out, tell her she wasn't nobody, you know what I'm saying? I mean, why she dressed the way she do, she looked cheap. He would kind of say something like, you look like a hooker or, you know, that doesn't even look good on you. You don't have the body for that. Why are you wearing this? I never had control of her before I had her. When I had her, you know, the fear, when I used to tell her to do something, she used to do it because she was afraid to be, get hit. Towards the end of the relationship, I started, I became very scared. I was terrified of him. I wasn't aware that there was a problem to speak to anybody, you know. I didn't speak to anybody about it because I didn't think there was a problem. Somebody in your family needs to know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if a woman's being abused by her man and don't nobody know about it but them two, it's going to continue, you know what I'm saying? Because can't nobody help you, you know what I'm saying? And can't nobody help you if you don't try to help yourself. If someone's being emotionally abused, they really need to talk to someone about it because it's a real problem. And they shouldn't just brush it aside because it is definitely real. Just as real as somebody punching you, it's just as real when someone's putting you down and hurting you to the effect that you believe it. Counseling the son, you know what I'm saying? You need to probably need somebody to talk to because maybe you feel you can't talk to your female, you know what I'm saying? And you can't speak to nobody else, so you're just gonna take it out your anger. My first thing would be try to get into some program. There's a lot of, you know, abuse prevention programs available for teens. I know of a baddest program, you know, and if men really want to get help, try to get themselves involved in that, you know what I'm saying, so they can try to help themselves. I have been through a lot of stuff that I feel was unnecessary, and I'm still working on being a very strong person. I'm independent. I do my own thing. But I'm involved with someone, you know what I'm saying, and everything is going proper, you know. She got her space. I got my space. We understand each other. I don't try to lock her down, and everything is proper. I think of abusers, and I just feel a lot of anger because I know, you know, firsthand what that kind of relationship does, and I know what it did to me and what I went through. Just really, if you feel like hitting someone, if you feel like telling them something, I mean, just really think before you do anything, you know? There's no reason why you should put your hand on your girlfriend. Under no circumstances should you put your hand on your girlfriend. You shouldn't talk down to anyone. You shouldn't talk down to your girl because, you know, you're, first of all, 
I mean, you have to really, who are you to do that? You have no right to do that. You have no authority over that person. You don't own them. You don't control them. You didn't put them here. I mean, you know, you're just their boyfriend. You're supposed to be there for them. You're their companion. Skyline Community brings issues to the forefront for young people, gives them a forum for expressing themselves and um, really deals with issues that they might not be able to in other ways, such as I remember there was something on uh, date rape or um, you know family violence, um, issues that they might not have other opportunities to express or explore. What I do want them to walk away with is life skills that they can take onto the next level, that they can continue growing and evolving in life in a positive manner. So be it conflict resolution and mediation, be it basic skills of working in a group or even communication skills. This is what I want people to walk away with so that they can succeed in life. The life skills that she, Kirsten learned while working with Skyline Community that she's applied in her work today is uh, a sense of setting a goal and accomplishing it, finishing something, taking it through to the end, um, responsibility, um, you know, exchange with people of different uh, ideas and opinions and feelings. What we're doing and what Skyline has been doing all this time is building a community of leaders, not a community of followers. And that's important. Without Skyline community, I wouldn't have a lot of opportunities that I've had over the past two years. They've helped me educationally and professionally and I appreciate everything that Skyline Community has done for me. It was my first job, the first time I worked with, you know, so many people without knowing them like that. And first time I worked with Lewis, I got to know him better. And first time I ever made, you know, a documentary that, you know, I felt good about and really proud about. The best investment in New York City's employment market and economy is an investment in our richest resource, which is the youth. SYP has given me future experiences because in the future I will be a facilitator for El Puente in Che, the group I'm in now. And um, now in the summer, SYP has given me the opportunity to be a co-facilitator. So I'm getting the experience on working with the kids and helping them. What we do here is now we're working on this environmental racism book and everybody has to do certain things. Some people are doing articles for the book. We have to go around to different communities and we have to take pictures of different things like transfer stations, for example, and things like that. The skills that I've learned in SYP is helping kids, helping the community, because I'm working in a community health and environment internship, and it's given me the opportunity to interact with other people, which is something that I want for the future. So this was actually the model to see how much it will hold. SYP has personally affected me because it has helped me communicate more. Before I used to be a person that it was hard to communicate with people, I used to be lonely. Now I get along with people much better now. With the experience that I'm learning through SYP, I believe that I want to get into a community organization after college. I would definitely want to work with my community. I'm a public relations coordinator, and a public relations coordinator job is to, I'm in charge of all written communications. There's a committee in YPIS called CCYD, Community Change for Youth Development, and I'm the resource coordinator. This is my first job. I've learned typing skills, people skills, how to organize a 
meeting, how to work in team, how to work in groups, and how to communicate with people well. I come to work every day because I'm learning a lot. I'm learning uh, getting job experience, I'm getting, learning filing and working with office, different office equipment, and presentation skills, as well as communication skills. Can I speak to Ms. Birdie, please? All right, could you let her know that President Muhammad called? I've gained a lot of knowledge from Summer Youth Employment. I've learned a lot. Um, if you get a job in Summer Youth, you will learn a lot, especially if it's your first job and you have no type of experience, you learn a lot for your work field in the future. When I grew up, I wanted to be an institutional stockbroker, and I figured working in the office would get me accustomed to that type of work. Thanks to SYP, I've got my first job, and I feel that it made a positive impact because I like the office surroundings, and I think that early training in my life, you know, really helps. I think I make the senior citizens here feel very welcome, very uh, happy, because I always treat them with a smile. Every time I see them, I say hi, I smile at them and I serve them, and I, I talk to them, I open up to them, and uh, they do the same to me, and uh, we have a little relationship, and that makes both of us feel good. The residents here uh, have a place in my heart. There was a resident there, a elderly lady, and uh, music was playing, and uh, she asked me if I would dance with her, and I said, okay, and uh, she held my hand, and I held hers, and we started dancing around the room slowly, and uh, during the whole time, she was smiling, and so was I. So I knew that she felt very good, and uh, I did too, because I saw her, and she was really happy. This is just something to get me ready for when I become an adult. I think the SYP is a new beginning for career choices, uh, definitely, because you know, it gives you a sense of work, responsibility, and uh, also you enjoy it, and uh, you learn. In the course of my day, I'm in charge of all children, all administration, SYEP administration, on their time card, payroll. I also do the computers. I put them on a list, keep them organized, their addresses, all information that is classified under me and Mr. Jackson. I've been working with computers, this is my fourth year. And I've been exploring the two languages, which is Macintosh and IBM compatible. I teach children, teachers, supervisors, adults, parents who are interested in computers. What I will say about the benefits of FYP is that it really will help you in the future, academically, professionally, um, personally, in your communication skills, and your profession in the future also. The reason I will recommend FYP is I know that person has a future and has a chance maybe to succeed in something that he may never know he has. What I believe that I'm gonna walk out with is with a lot of confidence. The Summer Youth Employment Open Doors for Occupational Opportunities, I think I'm a prime example exactly what the Summer Youth has plans in that I am doing exactly what I want to do at this point. Since I'm majoring in civil justice, I am at the heart of the Narcotics Trial Bureau. I know about everything that's going on. I get a feel for everything, and I feel it's so beneficial in that I see the drug charges coming. I see the ADAs on the wheel. I see them going to court, coming back with a guilty, not guilty. This is what I want to do. As a matter of fact, I know this is what I want to do so that I'm going to make sure when I leave here that I, I learn everything that there is to be learned. In the narcotics division, what I do that it will help me is that I learn how to do case tracking. Like if someone calls on the phone and they want to know, find out the status of a case, I would go into the computer, case track it. I will find the, where it is now, the ADA, the defendant, past charges, future charges. The Summer Youth Employment Program has had an outstanding effect on me, educationally, emotionally, everything. It's just been a terrific experience for me. As a commissioner of the Department of Employment, 
nothing would make me happier than to have each and every one of our participants, the thousands and thousands of youth that pass through our program, be the best ambassadors in the future, wherever they are, as uh, future bosses, <laughs> as administrators, as teachers, to remember that there is a program out there that works to be able to decide when they have the decision-making power that they too will provide up, uh, job placement opportunities for the kids of the future. The Skyline Way is to educate others, give back to your community, and basically educate yourself and you know really know really become aware of what's going on in today's society. These are some very very deep subjects and by us looking at them uh, with a little more knowledge, a little bit more philosophy maybe we might be in the position to make some real changes in our community.